What happened to my bearded dragons? You on my mind a lot. Don't need no time watch. I don't know how I got you in my pocket spot. What's up, YouTube? Now, before you get all in your head and rush to conclusions, I did not get rid of my bearded dragons. What happened to my bearded dragons in terms of why have I not been producing babies like I usually do? Well, I have a short answer and a long answer for you. Short answer, I got a huge building that I'm working on by myself, no help. So that means all my time is going to that. I do not have time to deal with baby bearded dragons. So therefore, I haven't really been pairing anything. Uh, because I don't want to have to deal with anything three months from now when I'm still working on the dragons uh, or the enclosure. Well, I'm still working on the building and also dealing with, you know, the arrival of a newborn. Uh, so that is mainly where I'm at right now. I don't know if you guys remember. Some of you probably don't even watch my videos, to be honest. I have like 2,000 something subscribers. And somehow I only get like 200 views of video. So where are y'all going? Where are y'all? Where are y'all at? So essentially, what's happening? There's a dragon over here trying to get my attention. But essentially, what's happening is I haven't been pairing anything because I don't want to have to deal with any babies. But all my dragons are still here. All my dragons are okay, uh, minus the fact that I am selling some of my head zero dragons just because I don't know if you guys watched my last video. I just didn't like the. I didn't like way it was you know like i'm not a huge fan of zeros anyways i just produce them to get some out for people to buy them and after all of that i still had an issue with the clutch so essentially for me i was just like you know what i've grown up these these dragons i've bred the dragons i produced zeros the zeros died i'm done i don't want to do this again i never have any issues with my wiblets i never have any issues with any of my other pairings but for some reason this zero pairing did terrible uh, so they're going away um, to whoever wants them. I don't mind selling them as a pair. I don't mind selling them by themselves. Um, they're on my mor uh, morph market as well as on my website by the time this video goes up. Now, the problem with pairing bearded dragons is that when you pair bearded dragons, it's it requires a lot of consistency. It requires you watching the dragons to make sure there's no aggression happening because that's usually their mating dance is pretty aggressive. So you've got to make sure that there's no biting and no, you know, gashes or anything like that happening. So you do have to watch them initially to see what's going to happen because the males and the females essentially will try to assert their dominance. And you will have to make sure that doesn't happen because you'll have to separate them if that's the case. Some males are just not as dominant as they think and some females are way too dominant and it's not going to work out for them. So usually when if that does happen, I try to reintroduce at a later date. Um, and if it happens again, I don't really go for it again. I'll try to find a different male for that female because usually it just requires a different male. Now, after you pair them, you have to watch for that female to make sure because usually within the first month, they're already laying their eggs. After you, you've already after you've paired them within four weeks, they're already laying their eggs. So you have to watch for all that because sometimes I've had females lay eggs as early as two weeks, and I've had females lay eggs as early as eight as late as eight weeks. So you really do have to watch for that. So it's a very, you know, consistent progress process where you have to be consistently involved into the process. Once the eggs are laid, then obviously you can coast for a month because that female will most likely lay another clutch a month later. And then you have to, you can't really coast anymore because a month after that, she's laying a clutch probably and the other clutch is hatching. So you really have no more free time. Um, so you have to really consider that when you're pairing bearded dragons, how much free time do you want to have? If you need free time, if the holidays are coming up and you have to go on vacation, you will not be able to. I promise you. Baby bearded dragons require attention daily, hourly, honestly, because you got to be out here every hour um, making sure they're, they're eating, making sure they're fed, because if they're not, people will get, or people, dragons will get bit. And so, you know, honestly, this year, I've had the most nips I've ever had in my entire time breeding bearded dragons, and I have no idea why. I honestly, this year was the most I've ever had to buy feeders and still had the most nips. No idea why. And like all these dragons are in groups of like five, six, seven. They're not in huge groups. So for them to nip themselves like that, it's not themselves. 
Honestly, it's possible that they can nip themselves. Sometimes I've seen bearded dragons, you know, if there's a bug on their tail or their toe or something like that, they'll go for it. They'll go for it, and uh, essentially they will nip themselves. And that does happen, but never have I really seen it, but I know it does happen. Um, all right, so at the beginning of this year, I said, or maybe the end of last year, I said I was going to go for 20 clutches of bearded dragon's eggs and about 20 to 30 clutches of ball python eggs. As of right now, we have done 12 clutches of bearded dragon eggs, and we are at already 12 clutches of ball python eggs. I don't know if I'm expecting any more ball python eggs. Possibly. I'm not too sure. I'm still pairing. Um, so there's a very high chance that 12 is where we cut it for both. And uh, essentially, that leaves us with less than I had planned, <clears throat> which is perfectly fine because... If I were to continue my planning, right, because I try to break it up by quarter. Every quarter I'll do some some pairing. And last quarter I slowed it down because I already knew there was babies coming. Or a baby, my baby coming. <laughs> and um, i definitely not going to do anything the last quarter of 2024. So if I were to have decided to do it, I would have done a lot of uh, pairing my... Uh, hold back hat we from last year he's about 15 16 months now pretty good uh size for breeding and he's been trying so i would have paired him to my hat we females um and my possible hat we females and possibly got some zeros out of that and then the thing about zeros is not that i hate making them is that i don't want to make them and that's it i want a pairing that's not solely for the purpose of creating zeros i want a pairing that's going to create wiblets zeros blue bars stuff like that stuff that ex excites me um not because zeros don't excite me that's the problem i don't I'm not a huge fan of zeros so if i produce them in a clutch because other things are being produced that's perfectly fine but i do not want to produce zeros just to produce zeros um so so where was i going with that um and then the other pairing i would have had was my other hold back from last year he's about 12 13 months right now I'm not sure if I want to breed him yet, but essentially he's also a pretty good size for breeding. And I have two females that didn't do anything this year that are red that I'll potentially breed him to. But that's not here or there. Um, not here or there. Neither here or there. I don't know how the saying goes. Um, and that's essentially, I think, all the plants that I had because all of the other females. Oh, no. There was one, v one female. My hypo zero female. It's 66% hat wiblets, or 50% hat wiblets, one or the other. And I was going to pair her to my hat wiblets male to see what I got. If she produced wiblets, and obviously that I means she's 100% hat wiblets. I might still do that, actually. I might still do that, because that means it'll prepare me for next season, and I know what to do with her. Because if she has hat wiblets, then I won't be pairing her to my wiblets next year to produce hat weiros. Instead, I'll just be producing, you know... Um, possible double heads because i'll pair her to like my yellow male or my red male or something like that to where all of the babies come out hat zero and possible hat wiblets or yeah that's that's not a bad idea actually huh huh more to come on that next year <laughs> i'm not going to spoil it for you all right now because that would defeat the purpose so that means i have to do it right now I'll do that right now alright so I guess I'm doing a pairing because this is something that I thought about doing in the future and if I don't do this pairing now I won't be able to do it next year and I don't want to wait two years for it and then somebody else beats me to it because as far as I know nobody's done this yet um, so I might have to do this I think so well, today, the day I'm recording this, it's hump day, and uh, that means that I start pairing my animals together. I have to run through all of the animals, the ball pythons mainly, because, uh, like I said, I'm not doing any bearded dragons, but I am now. So, um, let's grab the female that I'm going to be putting with the male, and I guess you'll kind of get a gist of what's going to happen. So, here's the problem. To prove this female out I have to do a certain pairing but to do the project that I want to work on I have to do another pairing 
So now the problem is, do I prove the female out first before I do this other pairing, or do I just go ahead and do the other pairing? I think I'm doing the other pairing. Yep. All right, let's do it. Uh, all right. So this is Sarah's body, or Sarah. One of my Sarahs. I had another Sarah with a C. This is Sarah with a S. She's a hypo zero, het translucent, 50% het wiblets, and, um, or no, 66% het translucent, 50% het wiblets. So, let's go put her with her male and see what we get. Because, technically, this will put me at a pace for a project that I want, and it will keep me from having to buy another dragon. If I can produce one myself, which I should be able to with this pairing. So let's do it. All right. I'm not going to tell you guys which male I'm pairing her to, but just know it's going to be epic. And no, for the people, oh, he's going to produce some zeros with her. No, I do not condone any visual to het zeros or visual to visual zeros as well as wiblets. So don't do that ever. Um, this male is not het zero, not het wiblets, as far as I know. Obviously, this is based off all of the lineage information that I have. Now, if something pops out, it's definitely not something that I knew about. But just know that I know who the grandparents are. So I technically they should not be het zero. So technically, so I grab this little card and I move it over there so I know where she's located because obviously I'll know she's in there because I put her in there, but. You know, just to keep track of my animals. So, let's go put you with this fella. Let go of my shirt. I think you just, gonna have torn it up. My favorite shirt. All right. Now, Sarah's body turns two in December. So, that means she's about 21 months or 20 months or something like that right now. What? Yeah, something like that. And that's usually a good age to start breeding. Considering she's like 340 grams already. So, it's not a big deal. Um... Now, I have said this in the past before, I usually don't start pairing my females until they're 18 months and 350 grams, minimum. Now, after that, because, so the, here's the process, right? The process that I go through is they lay eggs. If they lay eggs a, a month after they lay the first clutch, more than likely they're not, they're not going to get back up to weight. So that means they're their top weight is already going to be decreasing as the season goes as, as often as they lay their eggs. Now I have, for example, I have a female right now that laid five clutches this year. Only one of them was fertile. All other four were infertile. Now this, this female used to weigh 430 grams. Right now she's like 350 grams. She declined. So this is a female that I already had on a diet, but she went down about 70, 80 grams because of the diet and also laying eggs a diet alone would not make her go down that fast okay that's not gonna happen so i have put dragons on diets before and it takes them like two or three years for them to go down 100 grams this girl did it in a season just because she was also laying eggs now she's at a perfect weight now i can say for a fact that she's not obese and all of my other dragons are about the same weight 300 or 350 um, unless they are males, the males usually are a little bit smaller just because I try to keep my males lean. I try to keep them like three or 250 to 350, so somewhere in between that. And that's essentially how I try to keep my males. Now, obviously, males are a little bit harder to keep at a certain weight because they don't lay eggs. So sometimes I do have males that get up to 400 grams, 450. I have had males that got that big before. The male that I just put her with, He's like 390, so there's not much I can do about that. He's also very long. He's very long dragon, so essentially that also makes him heavier than he's supposed to be. Um, so I do take that into consideration. And he's just staring at her, and she's just laying there. Nobody's moving. Nobody's doing nothing. And again, you guys aren't going to see this because this is a surprise. Surprise! Uh, for everybody. Um, hopefully I do get something out of it because that would be epic. Because, yeah. Here goes the dance has started first it's aggression why are you in my spot then they realize it's a female 
and then it's the breeding dance. So now she's lowering her head. He has his mouth open. He thinks it's another male. He's about to go crazy. But now she's lowered her head. She has essentially said, I come in peace. And now it's just a moment or two before he realizes that this is going to happen. Let's do this thing. So, all right. I don't know. It's like I'm watching Dragon, you know. <laughs> I'm not. I'm just watching the dance, okay? Once they get started, I'm out of here, all right? So, now the uh, ball pythons, 12 clutches of ball pythons. Um, like I said, there's possibly more. Ball pythons don't take a lot of work, not going to lie, because you just have to feed them once a week, and you got to make sure they're clean. So, right now, um, you probably already watched this video, but I have some Xanthics that got laid from a partho clutch. This female did lock with the male, so I wasn't expecting a partho clutch. Um, but obviously, somebody said you should sh you should still shed test the well, at least one snake to see if it's het pied, because of the fact that maybe you got really good sex odds and maybe you got really good odds in terms of the morphs that came out. I don't I don't know. Um, do I want to spend fifty bucks on a shed test just to prove something that, you know, it. So obviously, what would happen, right? If I if it if I do a shed test for fifty bucks, and then I find out that they are het pied, obviously things change. But if I find out they're not het pied, then they all stay the same thing. So the change is it worth it? Is the change of possibly producing het pieds worth the, you know, the fifty bucks? And that's where I'm at essentially, because if they are het pied, do I want to keep any of them? That's the question. Because I technically already have two visual VPI Xanthic Pides, female. So why would I go and, I don't know. And I have another female that's VPI Xanthic, 66% hemp pied, that I still have to shed test. I don't know. So I have, I have a shed test for this one, a shed test for this one. I'll have to get a shed for this one. Shed test here, shed test here. And I uh, have another female behind this rack that has to get a shed test for Desert Ghost and VPI Xanthic. Um, and essentially after that... Oh, and I have to do a shed test on all of these to, for the Desert Ghost, Pied, and Clown. Wow, I've got a lot of shed testing to do. Alright, so I guess you guys are going to have to fund my shed testing. I need to do a GoFundMe. If y'all think I should start a GoFundMe for this building, let me know because this building's costing me an arm and a leg. All right, and my back is killing me. So let's let's. <laughs> but actually, you know, I was thinking uh, of asking you all. Um, I need ideas for videos. So I made a poll on my Instagram a while back saying, "Hey, what videos you guys want to see?" And a lot of people just said the same things that I already had. So here he goes. He got closer to her. He's still trying to figure it out. But um, he is a proven breeder, but he's still trying to figure it out. It takes a little bit. But essentially what happens, uh, what I, what happened was people would send me messages and say, do this, do that. And I'm like, I already have a video on that. And I send them a link. And they're like, oh, thanks. So I need something that I haven't done. So with that said, go in the comment section below and let me know something that you want to see. And I don't want to be that person that makes videos every year saying, this is the best, best, best for 2024. This is the best, best, best for 2025. I don't want to be that guy. Uh, I hate when people do that. I'm like, dude, you're literally saying the same thing you said last year. The video is the same length and everything. The only thing that's changed is you. You got a different haircut. So I, <laughs> so that's, that's essentially, I don't want to be that person. I want to create di different videos. I'm already like at 200 something videos. So, I don't know. I, I just want to create different things. And I, I don't want to be basic. So, let me know in the comment section below what you want to see. What you what you want, what, what do you want to talk about? Um, and also, the other thing is I've had people tell me, I don't like that your, your uh, channel is talking about hog noses. Or I don't like that your channel is talking about ball pythons. I'm only there for bearded dragon videos. I'm sorry. Do I... Do I just make bearded dragon videos now? Do you guys not care about the ball python videos? Do you guys not care about the hog nose videos? Do I need to make channels specifically for ball pythons and channels specifically for hog noses? 
What am I going to call them? QBs, tails, and scales hogs? QBs, tails, and scales balls? <laughs> QBs, tails, and scales dragons? That's, that's three channels right there. All of them are going to be the same. No, I don't. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Um, if you did make it this far, don't forget to smash that like button. Also, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything that I put out in the future. As always, peace.